Hi, my name is Piotr and I work here at Zmorph as a product expert. Today I will show you in a series of videos why Zmorph is the best all-in-one 3D printer on the market, how easy it is to use it, what kind of materials you can process and how it can change your desktop into a workshop. Along with the premiere of Zmorph Fab, we also worked on upgrading our dedicated software Voxelizer into 3.0 version. It comes now not only with more user-friendly UI, but also with fixed stability and performance. Let's see how it works. We will start with selecting proper setup for Zmorph Fab. So as first, select Zmorph Fab, then choose the toolhead from the list. In this situation, it will be laser toolhead. And right after that, we can press start since there is no additional options. Now we are in the laser workflow. First thing that we will always have to do is to import the file that we want to work with. I will import the example file for this video. This workflow works with vectors and paths, which means we need the file like DXF or SVG. To import the file, press big button import model on the center of the workspace. After choosing the file, the vector path will be imported to the software instantly. If you wish to import more files, you can use import button on the left bottom corner of the UI. After uploading the file, we can distinguish two main elements on the workspace. Yellow block is the stock, which is nothing else but the virtual representation of the material that we will process on our machine. And marked by the blue color is the loaded path. The stock can be set in two ways. The first default one is the relative stock. This is the option where the stock adapts the loaded paths. I will go to the DXF arrangement and scale the path to show you how it works. As you can see, as I scale up the paths, the stock also expands. One of the parameters that we can set in this method is the side offset to add extra stock around the border paths. And of course the same thing will happen while I scale down the logo. Now the second way. It's called fixed size box. In this method we can fix dimensions of the stock. In most common way we just set the size of the material that we have mounted on our CNC work table. I will set the size of sample plywood shipped in the box with the machine, which is 100 mm of width, 200 mm of length, and 6 mm of height. Now I can manually scale up the path to match the material and my needs. Here in the scene mode, we can also set so called local coordination system. This is nothing else than the spot where we will physically set the zero position of the toolhead before we start the work. In regular practice, we set the coordination system to left front top. And it will be set as shown on the video. Now we can move on to the next mode, settings. Do it by pressing next button. Here, in the settings mode, we can set what kind of operation we wish to use and its parameters. By looking from the top on the settings, first option that we will see is material. Here we set the material that we have mounted on the CNC work table. We can choose one from the presets or go to presets and add your own. You can do it by pressing preset duplication button. Then we can change the speeds of the laser for this preset and name it so we'll know which one it is. After adding it, we can go back to the settings and select it. But for this time, I will stay with wood preset. Second parameter is travel speed. It indicates the speed for jog operations of the toolhead, which is for example the movement of the laser from one point to another without engraving. Next one is safe elevation. It tells the toolhead how much you have to raise for jog operations to make sure it won't hit anything on the workspace during the movement. I will set it to 0mm since I know that I will engrave the flat play wood. 
Now, finally, we have engraving operations. First one is a simple engrave. We can set the repeat count to make the toolhead repeat this operation given number of times. One is the default value. Now we can press apply to all the software will generate the paths to show us how this operation will look like. The red trace is a trace of the laser toolhead. The blue path is the jog, non-engraving operation. We can now observe that the new operation appeared on the operation order list. Second operation is the hatching insight. Here we have few more parameters to set. I will explain them on the generated toolpath for better visualization. So for now, I won't change anything. I will just press apply to all. Let's take a closer look on the generated path. This empty distance here between red and white line is a laser hatching offset, as default set for 1 mm. The direction of the lines inside is set by the laser hatching angle value, as default set to 0 degrees. The last parameter, laser hatching spacing, is visible as an empty space between two parallel red hatching lines. Now I will change to the last third operation, which is hatching outside. Due to the fact that the parameters are the same, as in the previous operation. To show the difference, I will just press apply to all. As you can see, the whole stock is hatched except the insides of the paths. All operations that we added are visible on the operation order list. We can also see in what order they would be performed on the machine. Let's remove them and set hatching inside operation. I will set the offset for 0 mm, 45 degrees for hatching angle and 0.5 mm for spacing. The 0.5 mm spacing might be too dense and give ugly results. I will change it back to 1 mm. Now it looks better. All is left is to press next button. Software will now generate the G-code for this toolpath. In Gcode preview we can see the time needed for the laser toolpad to execute the G-code on the machine. We can use the save button to save the G-code on the SD card.